Hello, my name's Scott, and welcome to another science session with Greenbank Libraries. Today, that was Cosmo sneezing, by the way. Uh, he's decided to join us for this one. Today, we're going to make a turbine powered by heat. It's going to be a little bit like the turbines in all the power stations around Australia that make the electricity that powers all of our lights and phones and everything else. Now, this is a fairly simple experiment, but it's one that you're going to need your mum and dad to help you with because we have to use just a tiny little bit of fire. And fire is something that can be very dangerous, as we all know living in Australia with our bushfires. So it's something that you're going to need your parents to help you with so that uh, nothing happens, you don't get burnt, etc, etc. Now, if you want to come in close, I'll show you the things that you'll need for the experiment today. So, firstly, you're going to need some aluminium foil. Any type will be fine. You'll need a chopstick, if you don't have a chopstick, you can use a pen. The longer, the better. A pair of scissors. And over here, you'll see we need a plate. Uh, we need a marker pen, like a Sharpie, like this. We need some candles. Little birthday candles like this are fine. We need a lighter. And we'll need some blue tack. And with all these things, we'll be able to make our own turbine. Now, heat is a really interesting thing, and you can do all sorts of cool stuff with it. Uh, as we'll see, we can make our own turbine, but heat, as you probably know, when something gets warm, it rises. And what it's actually doing is heating up the air, so it's not the heat itself going up, but it's the air rising. As it gets hotter, the air becomes less dense, and it floats up. And you can use all sorts of cool things with that. For example, if you wanted to fly, like in a glider like this one, you can use the heat coming up off the ground to make the glider float higher in the sky. And it's that principle that we're going to be using today to make our turbine. All right, so the first thing you'll need to do is get a sheet of aluminium foil, like this. About that big is fine. This is actually probably a little bit too big. Take your aluminium foil and place it flat on the table. Now, if you come in close, I'll show you what to do next. Grab your marker, and with your marker, draw yourself a spiral. Now, it needs to be a fairly tight spiral, so we'll do one on here, like that. Just a pretty standard spiral. That's probably going to be enough. So we'll put that away. And now, we cut this out. So just take your scissors and cut out your spiral. So you can see I'm going to trim it around. And what you'll need to do is cut along the lines here all the way into the middle until your spiral is done. Now this can take a little while, so I'm going to cut mine out. I'll leave you to cut yours out and we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So I finished cutting out my spiral. I hope you went well with yours. If you made a mistake and had to start again, that's okay. It's only tin foil, and it did take me two or three goes to get it right the first time because I kept accidentally cutting through the wrong part. So when you've got your tin foil ready, it should look like this. I ended up cutting mine out to be a little bit thicker, uh, but you can still do it with a thin one. Give it a bit of a squash so that it's nice and flat. Uh, we don't want it all... all all over the place because when you cut it out it does tend to get a bit bent so you can see I've made mine nice and flat now and you can see it sits in a nice little spiral um, so when we get ready to use this it will fit nicely around our chopstick okay so next thing to do is grab your chopstick grab some of the blue tack that you've got and put it on the bottom of the chopstick so you need enough to hold it in place on your plate so put a little knob of blue tack on the end, and now in the middle of the plate. Now the reason we're using a plate is because a ceramic plate like this is pretty much fireproof. Um, so nothing's going to get damaged or burnt. And if you use your candle and some wax comes off, it's okay if you get hot wax on a plate. You don't want to get hot wax on any of your clothes or anything around the house, because trust me, your parents will not like it. Okay, so the next thing is to grab our spiral that we've done. See it sitting nicely like this, and place it gently over the top, and we need to balance it 
on top of there. Now balancing it can be a little bit challenging. So it might take a couple of goes. You might have to bend it a little bit to get it to sit. That's fine. As long as it's not um, too bent on there because you don't want it to be to have friction. So you see it's taking me even a couple of goes and I've done this before. So there we go. Okay. Now, the next step does involve using a lighter. So don't forget to get mum and dad to help you with this because fire is dangerous, you can burn yourself. Uh, it's something to be very careful of. You have to have a lot of respect for it. Okay, so I'm gonna cut my candle here. All right, there we go. So we've got a little stub left. Now this would be pretty sad if it turned up on your birthday card, but it'd be perfect for this because it will fit nicely underneath our spiral. Now place a little bit of blue tack on the end and you want to put your candle here underneath the spiral so that when we light it on fire and the heat comes out, the heat will warm the air up around the candle and the hot air will rise because it's become less dense as it gets hotter. And as it rises, it should spin our little foil turbine. All right, so let's see how it works. So you can see how powerful heat can be. In a power plant, a similar thing happens like this, except they use water and a lot of heat to make steam. And when all the steam expands and rises up, it spins the turbine and makes all the electricity in our homes. So you can see in that experiment, we had to fiddle around a bit because the tin foil was too light for just one candle. So we had to add a second one. When we add that second candle, the heat rising from them, from both the candles, hits the tin foil as, it go, as the air goes up and spins it round and around. Uh, so I hope you've had fun with this science experiment. Uh, we'll be posting another one soon. We'd love to hear how you went. Uh, and if I could just remind you, if you are going to do this experiment, please be very safe. Do it with your parents because fire is not something to play with. See you soon.